It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We're gonna to go right into the Word of God and study what God has done for us in Christ. You know, when you hear the Word of God, not just like it's a word of a man, but it's really God talking to you, it makes all the difference. Yeah, Dad Hagen used to always say, <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say, the Bible is God talking, talking to me. me. Yeah. In other words, when you receive the Word, like God's talking to you, that God and His Word are one. There's tremendous power in the Word of God. When we receive it, actually James said, receive it with meekness. That means you humble yourself for fresh revelation, right. fresh application of the Word. And when you receive that Word appropriately, he said it gets engrafted on the inside of you. It becomes part of your life. Yeah, when it's engrafted, style. he says, and you become a doer of the Word, not just a hearer only. Now, I like to say it this way, that when you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. Wow, that's good. Yeah, the moment you act on the Word, then it's God's Word, and God watches His Word to perform it. So He's really waiting for us to speak His Word. Yeah, and what all's in the Word? Oh, I love 2 Peter chapter 1, where it says, according as His divine wow. power, hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. In other words, in the mind of God, He has already given to us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of His Word. That's right. It, but unless we open up the Word of God, mm -hmm. begin to look at it, read it, believe it, it's left uh, without power. But once we do that, it becomes powerful in our lives. It's life changing. Yeah, actually the entrance of His Word gives light. So as we study the Word of God, you determine, I'm not just a hearer, I am a doer. I'm going to act on that Word. And the moment you yeah. act on that Word, it literally activates that promise because God's literally already done everything He's going to do about your salvation, your deliverance, yeah. your healing, your blessing in Christ. Through the blood of Jesus, God's already taken care of it and He gave us His Word. He said, now when you act on that Word, all of heaven will back you up. Right. And I'm telling you, the blessing and the power of God comes right as we act on the Word of God. And God's thoughts are much higher than our mm -hmm. thoughts. His ways are higher. You always hear that, but he, it doesn't stop there. Yeah. It says he sends his word down like rain. Mm -hmm. And I believe today as you watch the program, there's a rain of the word of God coming in your life. It's changing your mm -hmm. mind. And there's some new uh, productivity in your life coming forth. New, new things healing. bring forth. Yeah. Yes, maybe your marriage, your family, your finances, a mm -hmm. way of thinking. God's Word is His way of thinking. Yeah, we think God's thoughts. So I always like to say, if you want to study the mind of a genius, God's read the Bible yeah. because that's God's mind, God's thoughts. That's the mind of Christ. You can think just like God and you'll get some God kind of results. So we want to go right into the service today as we study the Word of God and you determine, I'm going to act on that Word. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, if any man, well, who would that work for? Anybody. Everybody say anybody. anybody. If anybody, any person is in Christ, in Christ. So what he's doing there is describing what happened when you made Jesus your Lord. What happened? What happened? You know, after the last election, the one who lost has written a book called What Happened? I'm sure the devil has a book like that. <laughs> what happened? Because it looked like he had you whipped and defeated and on your way to hell, but something happened on the cross and the death and the resurrection of Christ that Jesus changes everything. Amen. But you have to know what happened. Everybody say, what happened? what happened? So in Paul's letters, he tells you what happened in Christ. In Christ. 
are in the four Gospels, you see what happened to Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see what happened to Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. But in Paul's letters, he tells you what happened in Christ. In Christ. Or you could say it this way, Paul's letters tell you what man saw, and or, or the four Gospels tells you what man saw, or you see what happened from the outside. Paul's revelation tells you what God saw or what happened in the Spirit. So I like to say it this way, that the four Gospels are a photograph of redemption, and the Paul's letters are an x-ray. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see Jesus dying, Jesus buried, and Jesus raised. So the four Gospels are a photograph of our redemption. But in Paul's letters, they're an x-ray. He tells you what happened in Christ or what happened in the Spirit, or he tells you what God saw, or he tells you what the angels saw, or he tells you even what the devil saw when Jesus died and when he was raised from the dead. So Paul's number one terminology is the two words, in Christ, what happened in Christ. So you could say it this way, God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. All right, we'll try that again. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person. Or you could say it this way, God put into Christ everything he wanted you to have. So he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation or new creature. New, what does that mean? The word new there means new in kind or new in quality. It literally means unheard of before unheard of before. In other words, you're a new creature in Christ, not just new according to a new day, but new according to kind. So it's led some to translate that a new species of being that never existed before. So what God did in Christ, I like to say it this way. He says, old things have passed away. Everything has become new. Everything. Everything. Everybody say everything. everything. Or you could say Jesus did not go through the suffering of the cross and his death to be raised from the dead just to help you a little bit. In other words, what Jesus did on the cross and in his death and in his resurrection literally changes everything. Everybody say, this changes everything. Everything. Amen. The way you see yourself, the way you see other people, come on, your perspective on life. So if any person is in Christ, they become a new kind of creature that never existed before. Amen. Hmm. Amen. So what are you in Christ? Well, the Apostle Paul uses the two words in Christ, in him, or in whom, 130 times. 130. When I was 17 years old, Kenneth E. Hagan, Dad Hagan, came to my dad's church. He actually came first when I was eight years old. I didn't start paying attention until I was 17. <laughs> and honestly, I'd just gotten out of jail. My dad and four deacons came and got me out of jail at 17. So I figured it'd be a good time to start paying attention. <laughs> so when Dad Hagan came and taught, here's what he said. He said, there's many ways to study the Bible many ways. He said, but the one I recommend above all others is to go through Paul's epistles or Paul's letters. And every time you see the two words, in Christ, in him, in whom, circle or underline those two words because that's describing something you are or something you have because you are in Christ. In other words, it's not describing something you're trying to be, something you need to be, something you ought to be. It's describing something God produced for you in Christ. And the moment you are in Christ, amen, you got at least 130, but really there's only about 35 that are super significant in Christ's scriptures. So when I was a teenager, Praise the Lord, me and Pastor Rob probably started off the same way. When I was a teenager, I just did what Dad Hagen said. I just started going through Paul's letters. And every time I saw the two words, in Christ, I'd underline it, then I made a list. And then every morning, I would get up and I would say, this is who I am, 
and this is what I have because I'm in Christ. And Dad Hagen said, you actually just look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Let me just try that one more time. I said, you actually look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Amen. Amen. So just to understand a little bit about Paul's letters, which would be Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. So I started going through those. To understand those letters, actually, here's the way James Stalker said it. He said, Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. All right, one more time. You ready? Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. You say, what does that mean? That means when Jesus spoke to them in John 16, he said, I have many things to tell you, but I cannot tell you now. When are you going to tell us? He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, he said, it's too difficult for you to understand it, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to take you into the reality of what happened in Christ in his death and resurrection and what it has produced in us when we believe God. Amen. In other words, the moment you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, the moment you receive him as your Lord, what happened is that you are now in Christ. Yes, sir. One writer actually described what happened to you is you are now in Christed. Wow. You just got yeah. in Christed. <laughs> hmm. All right. What does that mean to be in Christ? Well, the word Christ means the Messiah, the anointed one, and the word in. What's the word in? Well, the word in is simply a preposition to preposition. Well, I was reading by one writer, and he said, uh, actually, the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. I thought, man, I should have paid attention in English class. <laughs> he said, the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. <laughs> the prepositions? Well, so uh, I said, well, what is a preposition? Preposition is just a little word that connects. It's just a connecting word, and it connects nouns, come on, pronouns, and connects to other nouns and pronouns, and shows relationship in whatever verb or activity is going on. Yes, sir. All right. that help you a little bit? Let's, let me show you some. <laughs> so the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. So let me give you these prepositions. Little words like for, with, in, through, and by are the key to the gospel. He said, but the English language was not constructed for a preposition to carry the kind of weight that the gospel calls upon it to carry. So the English language breaks down under the weight and the prepositions go almost unnoticed. All right, well, let me give some prepositions. Ready? All right. In Christ. Come on, 130 times. In him, in, in whom. So in Christ and most translators won't even mess with the two words in Christ. They may add in union with Christ. All right, let's see how this works. Let's look at the word for. That means everything Jesus did, he did it for us. Other ways to translate that would be in our behalf. Everything he did, he did it for us. Actually, Romans 4.25 says he was delivered up for our sins, our iniquities, and he was raised for our justification. What does that mean? That means Jesus was not raised from the dead until you were declared righteous. Amen. For, I mean, Christ has redeemed us. Come on, he hath redeemed us. Yes. And he was made a curse for us. All right, listen close. Everything God did in Christ, he did it for you, and it's set to the credit of your account like you were there. Wow. So in the mind of God, in the economy of God, God, you were crucified with Christ. So let's go here. For, he did it for us. For, with. With, what does that mean? That means I was crucified with him. Oh, but let me give you another one. This ought to make you happy. Let's see if we can get you happy just for a minute. He says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 6, it says, God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, he made us alive together with Christ. Yeah. All right. And 
hath raised us up together with Christ and hath made us sit down together with, everybody say with, yes. with him. That means I was made alive with him, yes. raised up with him, yes. seated together with him. Hallelujah. That means the fight of faith starts from up here. Yeah. All right, let's try that again. Uh, yes. Come on, there is a fight to faith, but you're really not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. Yes. Or you can say it this way. You take your place in Christ, seated with him, and fight the fight of faith from up here. Yes. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, let me explain it to you this way. I brought my grandson, Gavin. And Gavin, and we try to take different ones as we can. Gavin, of course, is one of our favorites, right, Gavin? So, and Gavin is so blessed, and so uh, he, he calls himself uh, G-Money. All right, G-Money means he's blessed, all right? So, Gavin, I had some great experience with Gavin. He's a second, uh, my daughter's second child. And when he was born, he was, you know, sickly, so we had to hold him a lot and, and pray over him a lot. We called him our little tree frog because he'd get real close and hold, and, and, I, and I'd hold on to him, you know, and, and I'd whisper and sing to him, Jesus is making you well. And so he's perfectly well today. Jesus making you well. All right. But we have eight grandkids, eight grandkids. Y'all know my poem, right? Here's the eight grandkids. My poem is, I've been, I've seen the lights of Paris, seen the lights of Rome, but I've never seen nothing as beautiful as the taillights of that car taking my grandkids home. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding, Dad. I'm just kidding, Dad. So, we were happy when they came, and boy, we was happy when they left. But anyway, so, so Gavin's one of my favorites, right? Get, get up, Gavin, just for a second. And so, Gavin, all eight grandkids, and so at our house, we got so many things. Stand up here where your granny can take a picture of you. Say, take a picture of granny. So, so Gavin, uh, all the grandkids come to our house, and they all have games, outdoors, little cars they can ride. They got swings, got swimming pool, all kinds of stuff. And I'd say, who wants to come and give Poppy a hug? And they'd say, sorry, Poppy, we're busy, we're busy, we're busy. But Gavin, he had always come right to where I'm at, and he'd give me a hug. Good. He said, I love you, Poppy. And I'd say, here's what I said to Gavin. I said, Gavin, while all the other kids are playing with the toys, you're getting close to the one who bought all the toys. <laughs> all right, sit down again. So, so since we have a swimming pool in the backyard, so we, uh, we uh, make all the grandkids take swimming lessons. We make them when they're very young. And not only do they have to take swimming lessons, I pay for all the swimming lessons. And since I pay for them, then I inspect them to see if they can swim, <laughs> right? Well, you have a shallow end and a deep end, and I found out that they can all swim in the shallow end. <laughs> so I don't give them a test in the shallow end, right? So Gavin, he had taken some swimming lessons, and so Caleb, my son-in-law, we were out standing by the pool, and we happened to be standing out by the diving board, and so uh, uh, Caleb, come, oh, Poppy, that Gavin, he's taking those swimming lessons, and boy, he can really swim now. He can really swim. I said, is that right? Yep, Poppy, I'm swimming now. <laughs> this was a few years ago. I'm swimming now. I said, really, Gavin, you can swim? Uh, Caleb's bragging. He's just trying to be positive, you know, but I'd kind of been watching Gavin, and I really didn't think he could swim. In the shallow end, he could swim. So we have me standing by the diving board in the deep end. So his daddy said, oh, he can really swim. I said, can you swim? Good. So I grabbed Gavin and just threw him right in the deep end. I said, I said, show Poppy how you can swim. Shoo, like that in the deep end. And I watched Caleb, his daddy, he went. Some people may think that's cruel, but I don't want that to happen when I'm not around. So I'm fixing to inspect. So I just dropped him in the deep end. And now here's what Gavin did. He sunk. He sunk, and then he was making swimming motions underwater. You can see him. He's like. <laughs> he's still sinking. I look at Caleb. I said, if I was you, I'd jump in there and save him. 
He hands me his phone, his wallet, he jumps in, pulls Gavin out. I said, now you go back to swimming lessons and there will be another test. I ain't gonna argue about it. I just display one, he cannot swim. So be a positive all you want, but he cannot swim. We don't want to drown positive. He cannot swim. <laughs> so when you start talking about who you are in Christ, you start talking about faith or how faith works, immediately some people, all, they just kind of turn you off because they've heard that a lot. But if the things of life get a little bit rough and they get in the deep end, come on, and they're sinking, Come on, and they're sinking, and they're making swimming motions. Good Christian motions. Good charismatic Christian motions while they're sinking. Then you're going to have to get back out and take your lessons again. Are y'all still here? Because God's not interested in you looking cute while you're sinking. Come on, God wants you to win. I said he wants you to win. Jesus made provision for you to win. So what we're talking about is not just a bunch of theology. We're talking about the reality of your redemption in Christ. Woo, man. Amen. Amen. And so everything God did in Christ, he did it for each one of us. Our identification with Christ. Go look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Are you ready? This is what we call the Apostle Paul's confession, which Christianity called the great confession. Are you ready? Galatians 2.20. Here's what it says. I am. Well, it's good to find out who I am. Starts off with I am. Uh, that I am would change every other I am. All right. I said that I am can change every other I am. Right? I am weak. I am tired. I am broke. I am, I am struggling. I am. No, this is an I am, come on, that comes from the great I am. I am crucified with Christ. Why is that important? Well, because the outcome is a lot better if you're crucified with Christ. In other words, you could kill yourself. The problem is, is you just cannot pull off a resurrection. So we encourage you, don't try to deal with this by yourself. No matter how miserable you are, you say, I think the only way to end this is to kill myself. Good. Well, the best way to do it is go to the cross and be crucified with Christ. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries. Many Christians talk about what they are trying to be, what they need to be, and what they are going to be. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. Because who I am was not made by my mama or by my daddy, to my grandpa or my grandma. I honor them, but who made me was Jesus Christ. What happened on the cross is what made me. What happened to Jesus is what made me. Come on. That's what makes you a new creation, that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. In other words, he's not saying who you're trying to be. He says that's who you are. Learn who you are in Christ with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ, the four CD set, Freedom in Christ, and the new three CD set, What Happened. Your gift of $25 or more will help Mark and Trina train pastors around the world. Order today. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. I trust you enjoyed the Word of God today. I always enjoy talking about God's Word and receiving God's Word because He sent His Word mm -hmm. and it healed them. In other words, there's healing literally in the Word of God. When we receive the Word, He sent His Word and it healed them. In other words, the Word has the same power as the very presence of Jesus Christ. He sent wow. His Word yes. and it healed them. We know that from Matthew chapter 8 when the centurion said, Speak the Word only and my servant shall be healed. In other words, God's Word in your mouth 
is just as powerful as God's Word in His mouth. I heard Reinhard Bonnke yeah. say that years ago. I like to say, when you take God's Word and put it in your mouth, then that's mouth to mouth resuscitation from God. You literally breathe in the <laughs> life of God. And so the enemy wants to separate you from that Word. But if you determine, I'm going to stay in the Word, I'm going to act on the Word, no matter how I feel or how things look, then literally that Word will produce supernatural results exactly. in your life. You know, Paul said to hold fast to the profession of our faith. And what one of the struggles that we have is holding fast. But the more we hear the Word of God, the more natural it will become because our minds will be renewed to the Word of God. Amen. Hold fast means hold on to your confession of faith without wavering. In other words, keep agreeing with God. You may say, well, it looks like I'm not telling the truth. Well, for one thing, God Himself cannot lie. He's no. telling the truth. So if you're in agreement with God, God's Word in your mouth has creative power when you're speaking that Word. So hold fast to the confession of what Christ has done for you, who you are in Christ, and what the Word of God does in you mightily just continues to say, I agree with God. I am who God says I am. I have what right. God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. So he says hold fast to it means there may be a time of adversity a time right. of challenge. Don't let go of it. Don't forget about it. Be conscious of the importance of your confession of faith in Christ, in His blood, in His name. And you'll find that word will work mightily. And we've got some powerful message and we've got some powerful books. You've got to get this offer today and feed on the Word of God day and night. And wow, you'll get some supernatural results. So you've got to get the Word of God. So I encourage you to get this order today. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in 100 different languages. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through website, social media, and the app, publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Would you like to join us in this mission to strengthen the body of Christ internationally? Your monthly offering will help pastors and leaders around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org to become a World Missions Partner today. Download the Mark Hankins Ministries app today. On the app, you can watch our TV show, listen to the radio program, read the daily devotional, and see where Mark and Trina will be. You can stay connected to Mark Hankins Ministries wherever you are. Download the app today on any iOS, Android, or Windows device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries and start feeding your faith today. We want to thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries. For more information, visit the website at markhankins.org or call us at 318-767-2001. Thank you for watching.